Okay, we're on um, figuring out the electron configurations of um, a neutral atom and an ion. So let's talk about this. This is really detailed. You can use a periodic table to help you figure out. You should have one of these, and I'm going to show you how to do that now. Um, so for electron configurations, Electron configurations describe like the energy and the shape of an orbital and where the electrons are located um, outside the nucleus. And it's kind of like describing where somebody is in a department store, since you can probably all relate to the fact that um, if you're in the shoe department at Nordstrom, you are on the first floor and every floor is divided into departments, so I have to specify where on the first floor you are. You are in shoes, which is probably the best section to be in, and um, within the shoe department there are different uh, shoe departments as well, um, if you know shoes like I do. So um, anyway, but we're going to do something similar with describing where electrons are located, okay? So what I want you to do is take this periodic table and you can either color code it or you can just write in like I'm going to do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put an S over the first two columns and I'm going to put an S over helium on the right hand side. We're going to cross out the hydrogen because we're not going to use hydrogen over there. Okay? Then what we're going to do is we're going to put a P on the right hand side and then we're going to put a D in the middle and then we're going to put an F on the bottom. So it looks like this. Okay? Okay, now, we've already talked about the N equals 1, 2, 3, 4, when we were talking about the Bohr model of the atom, and these were corresponding to the periods on the periodic table, like this. So, the principal quantum number N is now labeled, periods go from left to right, S, P, D, and F are like sub-levels, okay? I'm going to draw some lines in showing you where the S's, the P's, and the D's are ending and beginning. Okay. Now, S's have a distinct shape. They are spheres. So electrons that are in the S sublevel will occupy a spherical shaped region around the nucleus. Anything that's in a P is going to occupy a dumbbell shape. D's are clover leaves. F have no specific shape. N equals 1 through 7, energy levels are increasing as you move down the periodic table, okay? And as you move down the periodic table, the S's, P's, D's, and F's are going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. And I'll show you what that looks like in a second. Um, something else we need to talk about is the number of electrons that can occupy the S's, the P's, the D's, and the F's. So here you're going to notice that there are two boxes in each row of the S's. So like this is the beginning of 1S where the hydrogen is. This is the beginning of 2S, 3S, 4S, 5S, 6S, 7S. And you can write that in if you want to. After each one of them there are two boxes. So I'm putting 1, 2 to show you that I can fit two electrons in each S sublevel. If I'm looking at the P's, the P's are going to fit 6. So I'm going to write in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 to show you that there are 6 boxes. That means each P can hold 6 electrons. Now the P's don't start until the second energy level. So we have the 1S here, and then we have the 2S here. Let me move over. And then over here, this is the beginning of 2P, so you may want to make a note. Okay? And then this would be 3P, 4P, 5P, 6P. Now, the D's. There are 10 boxes for each of the Ds. That means the Ds can hold 10 electrons max. The Ds lag one behind the period that they're in. So that means that 3D begins there with scandium, if that's the fourth period. If we go down to the fifth period, yttrium, which is Y, is the beginning of 4D. And the next one would be 5D and 6D, if you want to make a note of it. Okay? Now, the F's, these two rows down the bottom, technically, these two rows technically fit up right here. Okay? So the F's lag two behind the period that they're in. So if this is six, this would be um, the beginning of four F. So I'm just going to write four F and five F. Okay? Now there are 14 boxes for the F's. 
So it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 boxes in the Fs. And that's what we are going to use to fill the Fs with 14 electrons max in each. Okay? Now, let's turn to page 7 of the chapter handout. Student exercise 13. What is the maximum number of electrons that can occupy the third energy level? Okay. When we're talking about energy levels, we're looking for the number that's in front of the S, the P's, the D's, or the F's. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to show you how, if I can make this bigger, I really can't. So we're just going to have to make do. This is 1S, okay? This is 2S. I cross, this is the beginning of 2P. This is 3S, so you want to write down 3S. It holds two electrons. Make a note of it. 3S has two electrons. Then I cross over, and this is the beginning of 3P. 3P holds one, two, three, four, five, six electrons. So you're going to want to write that down. Technically, even though this is the fourth period, this is the beginning of 3D with scandium. And 3, which is in front of the D, tells you you're in the third energy level. And 3D holds 10 electrons. So you want to write that down. So it's technically two electrons from 3S. Six electrons from 3P, 10 electrons from 3D. 10 plus 6 is 16, plus 2 is 18. We can hold a maximum of 18 electrons in the third energy level. Okay? Take a look at student exercise 14. According to increasing energy, what is the next energy sublevel after each of the following sublevels? Okay, so 1S is the lowest energy then 2s would be higher than it, and then 2p would be even higher, and then 3s is higher, 3p is higher, then 4s, then 3d is higher, then 4p, and it keeps going in order, okay? That's something that you have to know. As I follow it from left to right, that is increasing order of energy. So if 3p is over here, the next one would be 4s. So 4s would be the next one after 3p with a higher energy, okay? B, if I'm looking at 4D, remember, if this is 5S, 4D begins here, begins here with yttrium, which is Y. So this is 4D. I cross back into P's. Now, this is 5P because you have to go back to the proper numbering, okay, because the P's follow the same energy level that they're in. So this would be 5P that you write for after 4D, okay? So now what we're going to do is um, we're going to practice writing out electron configurations for some of the neutral atoms. Sometimes it takes, I don't know, 10 or 15 minutes to sort of wrap your head around it. So if you have to watch the video again, that's totally normal. Um, but just keep in mind that we have to describe where the electrons are located. And we always begin with hydrogen in the upper left-hand corner. And we always add from them going left to right. And you have to state sequentially where you are, OK? So, if I asked you to give me the electron configuration for hydrogen, hydrogen is in the first energy level. It's in an S, and there is one electron. So you would write 1S1, okay? The 1 stands for the principal quantum number or the period that you're in. We're in an S, which is the sublevel, and there's one electron in it, so we put it in the upper right-hand corner as a superscript. If I'm doing helium, helium is um, over here. I'm in the first period. I'm still in an S. I had one electron here. I have another electron here. So the electron configuration would be 1S2. So we would write down 1S2 for the electron configuration for helium. If I'm doing lithium, lithium does have three electrons, okay? But you have to describe where the first two are. The first two are in the 1s. So we have 1s2. Then I come down here and I'm in the second period. This is 2s1. So 1s2, 2s1 is the electron configuration for lithium. If you add the 2 and the 1 together, this 2 and this 1. That gives me three electrons, and that's how many lithium has. If I'm doing beryllium, it's 
1s2, 2s2. So I write down 1s2, 2s2, or beryllium. Okay. If I'm doing boron, boron has two electrons here, 1s2, 2s2, and then I cross over. This is the beginning of 2p, and I have one electron there, so I write down 2p1. So it's 1s2, 2s2, 2p1 equals boron. Okay? Again, boron has five electrons. 2 plus 2 is 4, 4 plus 1 is 5. You have to describe sequentially, following left to right, row by row in the periodic table, where the electrons are, and they keep accumulating. Okay? Okay, now, I'll do a few more. If I'm doing nitrogen, for example, okay, nitrogen is right here. So it's 1s2, 2s2, 2p123. So I write down 1s2, 2s2, 2p3, because nitrogen is three boxes over into 2p. Okay? If I'm doing neon, Neon would be 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, because it's six boxes over. So it's 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. Let's do magnesium, which is student exercise 15a. I'm doing magnesium. Magnesium is in 3s, so we have to start counting up here. I have 1s2. Then I'm down here, 2s2. Then I cross over. This is the beginning of 2p. I have 2p6. And then I come down here. This is 3s2. That's the electron configuration for magnesium. Okay? Now let's do gallium. Gallium is 15b. Gallium is all the way over here. Okay? So it's 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, this is the beginning of 3d, 3d10, then I go back to 4p1. So it's 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, 3d10, 4p1. I had to write it all out for you. Okay? And if you add all those electrons together, you'll get 31. That's how many electrons it has. Okay? All right. Now, I'm going to do the electron configuration for ions in a separate video and the shorthand notation in a separate video. Okay? So you're going to want to watch those as well. And, um, just be patient because this can take a little bit to wrap your head around, okay? The homework is going to be the electron configurations worksheet, okay?